Hello and welcome to Branches of Yah, another presentation. Today I want to talk about the love of Yah. I want to talk about the word love itself, Ahaba. Now I've done a breakdown of this in the past, but I want to re-go through it to show you what it is to love Yah in scripture and how it ties to his Torah. It is a wonderful picture. I'd love for you to see it. Um, please like, subscribe, and share, but mostly just share the word, the Torah of Yah with people, because all of his mysteries are linked to his Torah, his instructions. And it's echoed throughout the rest of the scripture. All of the scripture quotes Torah. And again, I'm not asking you to follow me as a person. I'm saying go back to your first love, the Torah of Yahuwah. So, no man, no woman, no man, no anyone who is out there teaching, especially of a Western mindset that are trying to conceptualize this from that Western mindset. It, I recommend that you instead go search out the matter for yourself and find the hidden mysteries. Use every teaching as a baseboard to jump off of to get right back into scripture. And no matter how convincing the arguments are, don't follow men follow scripture the torah the father revealed himself to me and to many others and he reveals his character to each and every one of us through his word and when you understand it in the hebrew the hebrew letters and the hebrew words you get a big picture this gigantic picture that you cannot get with english or greek or any of the other languages they just don't convey the same message so we're going to look at one of those words and all that it conveys and we're also going to look and how it ties to his very Torah. And we're going to see how much the Father truly loves us. So let's take a look together, guys. Right. Now, as you can see, the word for ahaba or love. So we have ahab, which is root, and ahaba is love. Now we know that Yahuwah is love. We know that we can search out that the love of Yah is keeping his commandments. When we keep his commandments, they're not burdensome. So... Let's go take a look together on what a wonderful word this really is and what it really conveys and how it ties back to his Torah, which has always been what Messiah tried to Messiah said when they sit on the seat of Moshe, when they read from the, the, the five scrolls of Moshe, those things you do, but do not do the things that they are doing. He's always pointing back to his father's word. The Messiah is the Torah, the living word. He is the embodiment of the love that is Torah. But let's go take a look at that word on its own. Now, in Portuguese, it's called suadedi, and it means the feeling of intense longing for a person, even when they are gone. Chinese say yofen and swahili abdendo, and that is affection and care. The ancient Hebrew word ahaba is often translated as love. In the scriptures, it has a unique meaning too. Sadly, this amazing Hebrew word is hidden behind the nonchalant English term that everyone uses for everything. I love pizza. I love this. I love, we are constantly using this word. When I tell a human being I love them, I mean it. And I could tell them every day, a hundred times a day. And to me, it has no less meaning. But unfortunately, that's not the case for everybody. If we would only allow the Hebrew scriptures to be a type of dictionary, we could really grasp this and other important concepts. Now, scripture is full of teaching, histories and laws, right rulings and judgments. It's full of what disobedience to the love of Yah brings. And it also is when you walk in his love, what it brings. So the scriptures should also be our dictionary. This means we should allow a scripture to help us understand the words that it uses. The scriptures should be used to interpret the scriptures. And the Hebrew scriptures should be used to define words today. The best way to understand words like faith and amuna, hope and love is through usage in the scriptures in the original language of the scripture, Hebrew. It's a living language. Hebrew is a powerful field force that helps us better to know the scriptures and the scriptures author. Yeah, each Hebrew letter is a sign and a symbol and a sound and a number. And don't be 
dissuaded from looking into this for yourself because it is fantastic, guys. When you really get, grasp what's going on here, it is mind blowing. I started this channel so that I could show you how mind blowing his word was so that people would get a love and a desire to go back into his word and would stop following all these teachers out there that are just giving tickling teachings for you the ears everybody is wanting to hear what they want to hear because they want to do things their own way but there's only one true way of doing things yas and there's only one way of doing it with with a loving obedient heart so we're going to go in and find that out through the very word itself and through the torah Now, each Hebrew letter is a sign, symbol, sound, and number. And by digging into the depths of the original language of scripture, we can grasp its message. Love, the English term, has many meanings in modern thought. Love is an emotion that can be turned off and on like a light switch. Yeah, we use that word. Uh, I love this. I love that. I love going to the park. I love I love us rainy nights. I love whatever. <laughs> love is just this word we banty about, which just means I like or really enjoy. So true love is love that's in scripture. Now, love or ahaba in the Hebraic mind is very different in today's culture. In the Hebrew, love is connected directly with action and obedience, as are all the Hebraic words. Strong's Exhaustive Dictionary defines ahaba as to have affection, and it's sensually or otherwise love like to befriend or to be intimate or have an intimate relationship. And it brings to mind an idea of longing or breathing for another. Now, Hebraically, ahaba is a verb and a noun. Again, so are all the words in Hebrew. That's why it's so important to study it out in its original language. Otherwise, you can be led astray by ear tickling teachings. And it is an act of doing. Ahab is not just a feeling. Now, to get a clear understanding of Ahava, let's examine the Hebrew word itself and learn how to love Hebraically. Now, first, most Hebrew words can be broken down into a three-letter root word that contains the essence of the words, meaning the root of Ahava is Ahab. The term Ahab to mean, means to give. True Ahava, true love, is more concerned about giving than receiving. Being the center of someone's attention isn't love. And love isn't about getting some feeling or fix. Ahab is about giving devotion and time. Giving is a vehicle. You have so loved the world that he gave his only son. That's a meaningful relationships have mutual giving. Love may focus on receiving, but Ahab is all about the giving. There is a difference. Consider that the Hebrew word Ahab and a haba is not an emotion, but an action. It's something that happens to you, but a condition that you create when you give. You don't fall in love. You give love. The Hebrew word ahaba is spelled aleph he bet he. The root ahab is spelled aleph he bet. These Hebrew letters reveal a secret of love hidden. To many for thousands of years, the secret is exposed to the meaning behind each letter in Ahab. Now hang on for amazing and alarming Hebrew insights. And if you've watched my channel, you know that these things are amazing and wonderful. Our Father's word is perfect. And this is how he reveals himself to us day and night. And it's, Hebrew is read from the right to the left. And the first letter of Hebrew, Aleph Bet, is the first letter in Ahab. This is the Aleph. The letter Aleph is the number one. It symbolizes the eternal Elohim, the Father. In Revelation 22, 13, Yusha called himself the Aleph and the Ta. Aleph is a picture of Yahuwah and his son. Yahuwah and Yahusha are one or united. They are united in cause. The son said the Father is greater than I, but he also said I do nothing lest the Father has given me to do. And Yusha said that this is the number one commandment. The first of all commandments is Shema O Yisrael, Yehu Elohim and Yehu Arhad. Now this is what it says in Hebrew. Yours reads differently, but that's not what it says in Hebrew. It says Shema O Yisrael, Yehu Elohim and Yehu Arhad are united. And, the, and that's exactly what the Messiah said as well. He said the Father and I are one. It's the exact saying. He's saying that we are united in our desire for mankind's salvation. 
He had every chance to back out, but instead he said, if it's possible, remove this cup. But if not, let your will be done. So we see he always had the choice. So he was in one mind with his father. He was there day by day with his father. He delighted in his son and the son delighted in men. That's what he tells us in Proverbs 8. And that's 22 through 36. If you haven't read it, go read it with that mindset. And he says, and you shall love the master Yahuwah with all your lib, your heart, and with all your being, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it, namely, that you shall love your kinsmen as yourself. There are no other commandments greater than these. Marcus 12, 29 through 31, Ahab starts with Aleph. Real Ahaba starts with loving Yahuwah first. Then, as a person has a relationship with you, one can love his brother properly. If we don't build a relationship with him, how can we love one another? Now, the next letter of Ahab is a hey. The letter hey is a fifth letter of the Aleph Bet. Five is the number of Hesed. It is highly symbolic. There are five books of Torah, five fingers on the hand, and King Daud gathered five smooth stones to kill Goliath. It is through mercy or has said that Yahuwah loves us. Mankind loves Yahuwah back through the fifth letter, Hey. How? Ahab is shown to Yahuwah through Hey. Through the five books of Torah, if you love me, obey my mitzvot or commandments. And if a man loves me, he will guard my words. And my Abba will love him and we will come to him and make our stay with him, said Yahusha and Yehunan. And that's four. 14, 15, and 23. The hey is the means that a person expresses Ahaba. You love and give to Yahuwah by your actions of obedience. Now, the form of the letter hey is interesting. The number five shows how to correctly love Yahuwah and man. The three lines of the, of the hey are the picture of loving Yahuwah with thought, deed, and words. The top horizontal line is the realm of thought person's thought should be focused upward on Yahuwah and his word. The vertical line to the right is speech from the abundance of the heart, mind, horizontal line. The mouth speaks. Speech comes directly from thought. The unattached line to the left is your deeds. To actions should be connected to our intentions. They often are not. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of Yahuwah shall stand. Mishle, Proverbs 19.21 Man is to unite the three lines through devotion and service. Loving Yahuwah with thoughts, words, and deeds is the goal of hay. And here you can see on the screen that that is the hay. It also represents a yod and a dalit. We'll get into that another time. But it is fantastic how this was put together. And I know this is more modern Syriac Aramaic, but... It is still very telling. Now, the bit or the beth is the second letter, the Hebrew Aleph, Aleph Bet, and it's the third letter in Ahab. This letter vividly demonstrates the purpose of all creation. How? Well, Beth is a picture of a house and a family. Yahuwah created the world to be a dwelling place in this world below and for us to be his family. The first letter in the Torah is Baith, found in the word Ba-Rashith, and the tabernacle was made to create a Baith, or a house and a family for Yahuwah. Know you not that you are the temple of Yahuwah and that the Ruach or the spirit of Yahuwah dwells in you? That's 1 Corinthians 3.16. The object of loving Yahuwah is to be conformed to his image and represent him to the world. The two are to walk together as one. That's what it says that a man shall marry a wife and the two become one flesh. So Yahuwah also wants to become one flesh with us, that we are alike, that we are ahad, that we are one with him and his son and through his son. Now, Bet is also the number two, and Yahuwah plus his servant equals two. Yet in the Bet, the two shall become one. Yahushua said, the father and I are ahad, united. Ahab starts with loving Yahuwah first and foremost through word, deed, and thought. This type of Ahab creates a house for Yahuwah to inhabit. You make a dwelling place or house for Yahuwah when you show love to him through obedience, gratitude, love, and commitment and place your kinsmen 
your brethren above your own needs, even to your life. In re review, the Hebrew root word for love is a hab, spelled aleph hey bet. The aleph reminds us that we are to love you who are first. Hey shows us to express that love by conforming our thoughts, words, and deeds to the five books of Torah, which are his instructions, echoed throughout all scripture. When love is directed first to Yahuwah, then a bit, a house is built to sustain his presence. Wow. Ahab is the greatest. Remember that love is giving, it's not receiving. It isn't even offering. It is giving. When you love someone, you give time, attention. In all of yourself. To get a small glimpse of the Father's love, just imagine giving up your f your favorite child to die in the place of heinous death uh, of, for a heinous death row inmate. That's what he did for us. While you and I deserve to die for our sinful Torah breaking, the Father gave his only son to perish in your place. He also gave us his Torah and commandments so that we could love him and love other people. Ahava is actually the reason for the Torah, to learn how to love him and love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments do not commit adultery or murder or steal, covet, or what other, other commandments are summed up by this. Love your fellow, your brethren as yourself. And love does no wrong to brethren. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of Torah. Romans 13, 8-10. Now, Ahab is the sum and the goal of everything in Scripture. True Ahaba is rooted in deep relationships. You can't intimately love someone unless you intimately know them. We know Yahuwah through his word. We connect with Yahuwah through acting out his will. Our love for Yahuwah is called obedience. Deuteronomy 11.1, 1, love Yahuwah and keep his requirements, his decrees, his laws, and his commands always. When you really love Yahuwah, you give him every bit of your life. Your submission to the lifestyle of scriptures is the world's proof that we love him and are committed to Yahuwah. This is how we are sure we have come to know him, by keeping his commands. The one who says, I know him, yet doesn't keep his commands, is a liar. And the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word truly in him, the love of Yahuwah is perfected. This is how we know we are in him. The one who says he remains in him should walk just as he walked. And that's 1st Yohanan 2, 3 through 6. The Messiah said that we prove our love to Yahuwah by obeying his commands. In Yohanan 14, 15, he also said that we show the world we are his disciples by our Ahaba for one another. Acting kindly and showing kindness to another per people is how unbelievers should be able to tell if we're walking in righteousness or not. Yaakov 2, 8 says, if you really keep the royal law, the, 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 the profound honorable law of Yahuwah found in scriptures, then love your fellow as yourself. That you are actually fulfilling the law slash instructions of Yahuwah when you carry someone's burdens. The Hebrew word for commandment is mitzvah. This term literally means righteous deed. When you obey the mitzvot, you are doing righteous deeds towards other people. When you are acting in love, just one simple, small act of kindness is equal to all the sacrifices in the temple. Read that again. When you are acting in love, just one simple, small act of kindness is equal to all the sacrifices in the temple. And that's what you have said. He did not long for our, our blood sacrifices. He wanted the bulls of our lips. That is our love and worship. Now, keeping the commandments is how we walk in Yahuwah's love in this dark world. And if you keep mitzvot, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. And that's what Yahushua said in Yohanan 15.10. Now, if you want to have the same oneness to be united in cause with Yahuwah as Messiah had then you must love Yahuwah by submitting to him. This is where love gets messy, though. There are literally thousands of mitzvot commandments in the scriptures. The sages of Judaism have counted 613 commands just in the first five books. Scripture. A survey of the Newer Testament finds over 1,000 different distinct directives with so much to do, where is a person to start? but they're all still based on Torah. 
every single command is summarized in love. To answer that important question we found, found here in Matthew 19, here's a chapter. A man comes to Messiah and asks how he can inherit eternal life. And the Savior tells him to keep the commandments and then specifically discusses the Ten Commandments with him. And it seems that the Big Ten are a good starting place until you read a little further. The young man said that he was blameless in his observance. Yusha said he lacked in one area. You could be wrong with a person who had not broken Yahuwah's divine law. Well, Yahushua tested the man by telling him to sell all he had, show his love to the poor, and become a disciple. And the man went away sad. Even though he had kept perfect Torah observance, he lacked love. We never read of him again in scriptures, did we? Now, love must be our motivation for any Torah keeping. Our submission to the Ten Commandments has to start with Ahava. Obedience without love is lifeless religion that only leads to more death. Rules without relationships lead to rebellion. Indeed, if you keep the royal law prescribed in the scriptures, love your fellow as yourself, you're doing well. But if you show favoritism, you commit sin, they're convicted by the law of transgressors. For whoever keeps the entire law yet fails in one point is guilty of breaking it all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. So if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you're a lawbreaker. Speak and act as though who will be judged by the law of freedom. For judgment is without mercy to one who has not shown mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Jacob, that's 2, 8, 2, 13. How often do you look for opportunities to share love of Yahuwah with other people? Get this major point. When you love your brethren, you are most like Yahusha. When you keep Torah, you are most like Yahusha. We show our love to Yahuwah through obedience to his commands. Yahuwah shows his love towards us through his mercy. When a person is of a renewed mind, conformed to the will of Elohim, they receive the Father's love through unmerited mercy to be returned to his favor. His has said in Hebrew, in Yahuwah's gift of love to us, we don't deserve it. And we can't earn it. Yahuwah loves us, so we have done nothing but cause him pain. It's an unending love. The people who survived the sword found mercy in the wilderness. When Yisrael sought for rest, Yahuwah appeared to him from far away. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. That's Yarmiyahu 31, 2-3. Yahuwah has said should empower us to be faithful during the stress of life. He has said, my mercy is sufficient for you, and my power is made perfect in your weakness. Again, Yahuwah loves us by showering his mercy upon us on the best and the bad days. Now, the Hebrew people were chosen by Yahuwah from the entire world to be a royal priesthood, a peculiar people through his Torah. Yahuwah chose them and chose you because of his mercy. Now you choose to love him daily by following his commands in Deuteronomy 7.79 tells us, Yahuwah did not set his affection on you or choose you because you were greater in size, number, and esteem than other peoples. For you were the smallest in size, number, and had been brought low of all peoples. But it was because Yahuwah loved you and kept the oath which he swore to your forefathers that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of servitude from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that Yahuwah is Elohim. He is faithful, keeping his oath of love to thousand generations of those who love and keep his commands. Accept the Torah as Yahuwah's loving instructions for your life. Decide to love him by loving people and making a haba your motivation. Do the mitzvot to help others. An amazing haba story is found in in Bereshit of Genesis 29, when Jacob worked for Rahel for many years. The years seemed to him but a few for the love he had for her. Torah is not a burden when it's motivated by Hahaba, love. Walking in faithful obedience should simply be the overflow of our love to Yahuwah. When you're behaving as if you love someone, you presently come to love him. If you injure someone you dislike, you will find yourself disliking him more. And if you act favorably and show mercy, you will find yourself disliking them less. Love isn't about getting some feeling or a fix. It's about devotion and time. 
It's better to give than to receive. And when true love is found, a person is never the same. However, do you consider Yahuwah as your true love? And now, Yisrael, what does Yahuwah your Elohim require of you? But to fear Yahuwah your Elohim, to have your walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve Yahuwah your Elohim with all your leb, your heart, and with all your being, to guard the mitzvot of Yahuwah, his rulings, which I command to you for this day for your best it's in Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 13. And Moshe is saying that all Yahuwah wants from Yisrael is love. He wants Yisrael to be devoted to him alone. And he wants you. It's simply amazing that Yahushua called the greatest commandment in all Torah is usually ignored by most teachers, preachers, and even the people calling themselves rabbis. Think about it. Just how many servants have you heard on the subject of loving Yahuwah? His way, as he says, how many messianic scripture studies have you attended where you discussed how to properly love the creator? Now, people will talk about tithing or whatever, but very little is studying on the issue of loving Yahuwah his way. Ahab is the commandment that is most important in Yahuwah's eyes. Yahuwah wants his children to love him properly. He, he has a way that we have to do this. And you shall have the master you who with all your heart and with all your being, with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment, said Messiah Yahushua in Marcus 12, 29 through 31. How do you love Yahuwah? How exactly can you love someone you can't see or touch? What does it mean to love him with all your heart, being and resources? To answer these questions, let's return again to the word love to better understand what Yahuwah desires. First, take to mind that Yahushua never told us to love Yahuwah. Not in those words. This is because he never spoke English. I'm not saying he couldn't have, but he didn't. The, the Yehudi Messiah spoke Hebrew and said to Ahabta Yahuwah. Now, the puppy love of today's English is much different than the devotion Yahushua called for when he spoke in Hebrew. In modern thought, love is an emotion. The Hebrew concept of love is very different. Therefore, Ahabta Yahuwah, your Elohim, and guard, protect, keep watch, keep safe his charge, appointments, ordinances, precepts, and laws. That's Deuteronomy 11.1. 1. In the Hebrew, love is connected directly with action and obedience. And again, the primitive root word ahab means to have affection, intimate love, like to befriend, to be intimate. It brings to mind an idea of longing or breathing for the Creator. Hebraically, Ahaba is the verb, is the act of doing something. It's not just a feeling. Ahaba is also connected to appetite. To Ahaba, Yahuwah is for our beings to desire Him and His Word. And all throughout scriptures, Ahaba is related directly to Torah. Obedience to what Torah commands is the way mankind loves Yahuwah. If you love me, obey my mitzvot. If a man loves me, he will guard my words, and my Abba will love him, and we will come to him and make our stay with him. In Messiah Yahushua in Yohanan 14, 15, 23, to Ahabta Yahuwah, you must walk in submission to Yahuwah's will and crave that for your life. And that's pleasing unto him. When you love Yahuwah, then your deepest desire is to connect with him. Torah study is the way to discover this path of meaning. Torah Chaim, literally the book, Instructions for Living, is Yahuwah's communication to the world. It is an ultimate repository of wisdom on how to succeed at marriage, parenting, community building, and fixing the world. That's because Torah is the mind of Elohim. The sign of a successful Torah study is when it becomes an insatiable addiction. If there's a hidden treasure, you will rack your brains to find it. And every time you succeed in working it out, the pleasure makes you want more and more. That's what this channel was always about. I hoped that that's what this would instill. The level is called Ahab Torah. True love of Torah. You become so overwhelmed that Torah study becomes your very essence and you want to absorb as much as you can. Torah study ingrains us in the idea that Elohim is the infinite source of all wisdom and defines the ultimate in meaning. Therefore, personal goals and desires cannot compare, and you'll drop anything that is not consistent with the will of Yahuwah. Torah says you shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart, with your very being, and with all your effort.
when you love Yahuwah with all your heart or lib, you are basically losing self to Torah. And again, Ahaba and Leb are connected because Leb is Lamed Beit, and that is the shepherd of the house. And you see that in Ahaba as well. This is when you will be totally compliant to Kadosh will in all areas of your life. When we are compliant to Torah, we are Kadosh before the Father. That means to be set apart, separated. Now, to love Elohim is not an emotional feeling. To, to love Elohim the way he desires us to love us means to totally give ourselves over to him. To surrender, to relinquish, and to abandon ourselves to him, regardless of how we feel, what we think, or what we desire. It means to set our life so that his life can come forth from our hearts. A perfect scripture that sums up what it means to Ahava Yahuwah is in Madith Yahu 16.24. And if a man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his walking stick and follow after me. And there it says Zulon or Staros, but it, it means your stick to get off your butts and, and to walk the path, the derrick. Now, Ahab means to give. When you love to give to others, Yahuwah so loved the world that he gave his only son. This type of Ahab changed the world. When you love in the same way, your world can change too. When you love Yahuwah with all your being, you are reconnecting to the original intention of Torah. Yahuwah created man to be a direct communication, and following the mitzvot restores this fellowship. To love Yahuwah is to obey Torah, and therefore bridges the gap between man and the Almighty. When your actions line up with Yahuwah's word, it's like your being is returning to the Gan Eden. Now that's the Garden of Eden. Compliance with the commandments or mitzvot creates an attachment to the eternal. In fact, according to Strong's exhaustive dictionary, the root word to the term mitzvot or commandment is sabah. And that literally means to constitute or enjoin. The mitzvot of Torah enjoins the branches, natural and wild olive branches that were cut off back to Yahuwah. But if this is true, then the opposite is also true. Sin or Torah breaking separates humanity from the Kadosh. The Torah of Yahuwah, sin is really an expression of love. Of self, loving yourself more than you love Yahuwah. If you break Torah, it's because you love yourself more. If you follow other men's teachings because it's convenient, you love yourself more. It's just a fact. Loving Yahuwah with all your very being... The word made flesh. This also means coming to grips with the issue of satisfaction of what's easier, convenient, or just better for you. Remember that the word ahab suggests craving. People have an inward craving and a desire to love, but they fill this void with love of stuff for people or self. When your very being is devoted to Yahuwah, you accept the emet. Now that is a stable, lasting firmness of faithfulness that Yahuwah has not cheated us. The world only has an appearance of satisfaction, having money, fitting in, eating anything, carefree living that will never satiate your inner craving to love Yahuwah and receive his love. Never will. Finally, to love Yahuwah with all your resources, strength, thoughts, and actions is to serve him with all that you have and all that you are. This type of Ahava is deep. Yahusha once came in contact with a rich man who kept many of his mitzvot, but did not fully devote himself to Yahuwah. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Tob master, what shall I do to inherit eternal high or life? And Yahusha said unto him, Why do you call me Tob? No one is Tob except one, that is Yahuwah the Father. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your Abba, your father, and your mother. And he said, all these I have kept from my youth. Now, when Yahushua heard these things, he said to him, yet you lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute unto the poor. And you shall have treasure in the Shamayin or heavens. And come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful because he was very rich. And that's in Lucas 18, 8 to 23. The man had to do something. Sell all he had to follow Yahushua to prove his love for Yahuwah to prove in his actions, not just words. 
Let's look again from a quote from Deuteronomy. Therefore, Abda Yahweh your Elohim and guard his charge and his commandments always. That's in Dabarim 11.1. 1. Here, the emet, the truth is very clear. To Abda Yahuwah, you will obey his commandments. Mitbut always. No matter what it costs, if you really love Yahuwah, you will obey him. Now, have you accepted a counterfeit in place of loving Yahuwah? Are there areas in your life or our lives that we really need to fully turn over to Yahuwah? Do you wish to really love him, to really obey him? Shaul wrote that the three remain, Amuna, faith, hope, tikba, and love, ahaba. And the greatest of these is ahaba. The main point of life is ahaba. You've been granted breath to love others and to love Yahuwah. The word Ahaba helps us to finally understand that Yahuwah's true plan of love. And although we learn so much, there is much more in the scriptures about Ahaba. Do a word study on love from the entire scriptures. Find the real truth regarding this issue. Study the Hebrew. Study the words. Study the letters. Find the biggest picture. And your life will never be the same. For Yahuwah so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes... In him shall not perish, but have eternal life, Yohanan 3.16. And I've been impaled with the Mashiach, and I no longer live, but Messiah lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live in faithful belief in the Son of Yahuwah, who loved me and gave himself for me, Galatians 2.20. Know therefore that Yahuwah, your Elohim, is the Most High. He is a faithful Elohim, keeping his oath of promise of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and safeguard Keep, protect his commands. Devarim 7, 9. For Yahuwah loves the just and will not sit, forsake his faithful ones. Tehillim or Psalms 37, 28. I love those who love me and those who seek me find me. That's Mishle or Proverbs 8, 17. This is how Yahuwah showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved Elohim, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since Yahuwah loved us so much, we ought to love one another. 1 Yohanan 4, 9-11 And we know and rely on the love of Yahuwah has for us because Yahuwah is love. Whoever lives in this love lives in Yahuwah and Elohim lives in him. 1st Yohan in 4.16 We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love Yahuwah, yet hates his brethren, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brethren whom he has seen cannot love Yahuwah whom he has not seen. That's 1st Yohan in 4.19-20. Do you get that? I'm going to read that one again. We love because he first loved us. We love Yahuwah because he loved us first. And if anyone says, I love Yahuwah, yet hates his brethren, that means to even have anything against them. He's a liar. For anyone who does not love his brethren whom he has seen cannot love Yahuwah who he has not seen. And this is how we know we are the children of Yahuwah. The children and who are the children of the devil. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of Yahuwah, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. 1 Yohanan 3.10 So, be very careful to love Yahuwah your Elohim. Yahusha 23.11 The Savior replied, Love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart, with all your very being, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your kinsmen or brethren as yourself. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. When we look at the seat of Moshe, the Torah, the five scrolls given for us as instructions, but also as a picture of Yahuwah's love or Ahaba, all scripture refers to the Torah of Ahaba, the Torah of love. The Father's Mashiach and his, is his word, his Torah, and our salvation. So let's take a look. Barashith literally is that word Genesis means in the beginning or from the start. Now broken into its roots and order here is the meaning. The sun, the first fruit, has authority of the house from Elohim. Now this is broken down into its B, Rashid, Bar, all of it. It's broken down. The son of the first fruit has the authority of the house from Elohim, crowned with thorns upon his head on a tree, is the mark or sign of his oath that is his gift. 
That is all in that first word in scripture. Shemoth means names or those who are marked as a remembrance, his oath to Abraham. And these are the names of the children of Yisrael who came out of Mitzrayim and with Jacob, each one with his household. Waikra, and he, Yahuwah, called. The root is Quara, to call out, to proclaim, to offer terms. And Yahuwah called to Moshe and spoke to him from the tent of appointment, saying, Bemidbar means mouth or wilderness. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, the tent of appointment on the first day of the second new moon, in the second year after he'd come out of the land of Mitraim, saying, and Debarim, the words are royal edicts, the commands of righteousness and right rulings and ways. These are the words which Moshe spoke to all of Yisrael beyond the Yarden in the wilderness of the desert plain. This picture of what love or Ahava is, is beyond feelings. It's understated and beyond measure. The Torah of Moshe explains this. In the beginning, Yahuwah called out to offer his terms to the children of remembrance per his oath to Abraham to the wilderness on his appointed time in due season to proclaim his words, commands, and right rulings, and that his son, who is the first fruit given all authority over the house of Elohim, would be crowned with thorns put upon a tree as a sign of Yahuwah's gift, his oath of salvation. That is in the first five books what those words literally mean. Again, we'll go back and look at it. Barashit, Shemoth, Wikra, Bamidbar, the Barim. This is a summary of what that means. In the beginning, Yahuwah called out to offer his terms to the children of remembrance per his oath to Abraham, to the wilderness on his appointed time in due season, to proclaim his words, commands, and right rulings, and that his son, who is the first fruit given all authority over the house of Elohim, would be crowned with thorns put upon a tree as a sign of Yahuwah's gift, his oath of our salvation. What more proof do we need? He loved us first, best, and held back nothing for that purpose. Yahuwah's Torah, the scrolls given to Moshe, spells his plan, his love, and his son's loving obedience to his father, no matter the cost to himself. Love is a thankful, grateful, humble heart of service to Yahuwah. Loving obedience to what he says and guarding to do it his way and a humble heart to service to each other, strengthening each other in Torah, encouraging one another in trials, tests, and refinement, not becoming proud or puffed up in our knowledge, but building up the body, esteeming each other as greater than ourselves. Love, Sasha Haba, promotes obedience to Torah, a desire to be in favor or right standing with Yahuwah. Loving each other in and with Torah is our real-time practice. Let's keep his Torah of love together out of love for him and one another. Thanks, guys. I just wanted to read that to you and put that together. I hope that uh, that had some impact. I hope that you go back into his word to see that it's not just simply the words on the page, but it's the meanings behind those words. And it's everything that's within him. I thank you guys. We love you. And we want you to go back to Torah. Don't follow the teachings that are out there. Don't follow what men are doing. Follow the Torah. Follow, read, and research the Hebrew and the letters. Find out what the Father's really trying to say to you because it's the truest way of getting to know him. Stay in prayer continuously with him, to him, and for one another in all that you do. And we will see you next time. Thanks a lot.